right guys so i made a video a while back i guess it's almost been a couple years now going over just how much the parts were going to cost and everything you'd need and i probably went into a little too much detail because it ended up being over 30 minutes long and i think kind of lost everybody's interest but i'd really like to make something short just to basic just the basics of what you need to do this swap pretty much on any vehicle because a lot of it's going to be universal so i just want to like i say keep it short and try cover all the the important stuff so obviously your first thing is your adapter plate you can't really see the acme adapter on this toyota down there it bolts to the transmission and then bolts to your to your tdi engine but um, just depending on whatever kit you use, it's going to either come with a new, um, a new flywheel or an adapter to use your original flywheel. And then depending on whether you've got a clutch, you pretty much, if you want to use an automatic, you've got to use one that has an adapter so that you could use the pressure plate on it off of whatever Toyota or Jeep or however you do it there. So that does limit your options on adapters, but overall that gets your your engine sitting in here and bolted to the transmission so you're pretty much ready to ready to go and then it's from there it's all the little things um your motor mounts obviously this the ones on the Toyota are pretty hard to see here, but um I just use rubber mounts here that bolt to the sides of the block. Um, people use front mounts that kind of sit like the like it did in the in the Volkswagen but I I prefer I think I can get that in the video there and not really everything's pretty well mounted in place but my my other motor mounts right there it's a little tight on that side but it does work pretty well to do these side mounts and I just um, some people like the the hydraulic mounts and to give it a little more cushion and take out some vibrations but i found actually i like having the idle up more around a thousand to eleven hundred and that really cuts down on a lot of the diesel vibration that way so anyway and then um radiator hoses i've got a couple of them i can probably put the link to these two that i've used that are right just at O'Reilly's or probably Napa or anywhere. This one that comes across, I found a lot of these swaps ends up with the radiator hose on the opposite side. And so you can either run the radiator hose that way, or I've always ended up running it this way. And this one's pretty long. It comes clear over here. But this is actually one of the original hoses off of the Volkswagen itself. So, and then the lower hose goes it's pretty tight in here to see but again that all was just one piece hose and then for the top i actually used where they spliced together to run my um the steam vent off the back of the head i kind of can see there it it runs along and goes back over and meets up with the with the top one there and um then of course there's just all your your heater core hoses here you just kind of have to pick and choose what works the best um as far as intercooler piping i have so far really enjoyed just using a universal kit off of ebay it gives you a bunch of clamps and depending on like whichever intake you've got this is a one of the brm intakes um it pretty it works pretty well and then I've got it coming off the turbo and wherever you can get the intercooler mounted at obviously that can be a challenge so this one mounted pretty well there and then I put the um, heater core actually or sorry the AC condenser is actually behind inside the engine bay now and as far as wiring goes, there's quite a few companies now that um, are making 
wiring harnesses, um, pretty plug and play stuff. This actually has the most of the wiring out of the Volkswagen still in it. I basically just um, cut everything off that wasn't needed and tied up and taped most of the rest of the harness together. And it all mostly fits under the dash. Um, again, you can't really you can't really tell it's all there, but that's what worked there. And then, um, as far as gauges and things go, for this one, I didn't really like the the Toyota gauges to start with, so a custom setup was the best option for me there. Um, but it's pretty easy. I've got videos on making the Jeep gauges work, and, and I could have made these Toyota gauges work. Mostly it's just keeping the sensors, and um, the sensors, and that's anything that you'd need to get the tack working. Um, as far as the wiring to the coil, but the, the oil pressure and the, the coolant temperature are your big ones to keep if you want to get that that working again and then if you do go with an automatic you're going to have to mess with the <clears throat> probably the throttle position sensor as well as any um downshifting cable or if that's electronic mess with that off of the throttle the throttle pedal on whatever you're swapping there so um power steering has so far been really really basic for me i took this line actually is um from the from the 22 re version of this truck the um the v6 the 3.0 liter that was in here was a little little shorter and didn't end up right where i wanted it so i went with this one but as far as the high pressure line and then the low pressure i literally just used the reservoir from the from the Volkswagen running over to the Volkswagen pump and then the the return line just goes right down to the Toyota gearbox and that is so far worked on all my swaps the um the Jeep and the Chevy both have a threaded in port and they match the thread pitch at least enough that they tightened up and they don't leak so I can't complain about that at all. Um, the fuel system, I think I've went over this before, but the I pretty much on all of them, even with the PD, I just ran the, the factory hoses to the factory filter. That did have an aftermarket filter on, on the BEW and the Chevy, but either way, you basically just run those there and I've ran this this H fitting on all three of mine and I don't have it on the Jeep actually but this gives you the option of just leaving the factory fuel pump in there um, you could also get a pressure regulator and not have the the H in there and you could also just get a Volkswagen pump and that would work as well Put that in the tank but this option basically keeps you from even dropping the tank i basically just pump the the fuel out pump the gas out and fill it up with diesel and away it goes and as far as air conditioning um obviously this has the factory volkswagen pump down there um if you use that i went ahead and just used the factory lines and got a little bit of a leak there still but you can see I welded them together and did the same thing this is the high pressure side over here and that pretty much hooked that all up then just the wiring but you can also go ahead and delete it either with a delete pulley or just depending on which engine you use um, you can get that just completely remote removed and not even mess with it so Either way, it's not too bad to hook up. The vacuum system, that'll really depend on your turbo. Obviously, this guy is not running any vacuum. But, 
for the most part, I just ran, you can see here, the, the Volkswagen pump plugged right into the hose that goes across to the brake booster. That was easy. And then I did leave the, the vacuum bulb over there and have this hooked up to it. But the rest of it just plugs right into the, um, the factory Toyota vacuum system. And that just works as it should. I know on the Jeep that actually went inside to running all the heater controls. But again, everything just works as normal once you plug that in. And that's about all there is to it. So I know there's a lot of little details and feel free to ask me anything if you have any questions on that stuff. But that's kind of what it takes to get everything hooked up and and then you're rolling. So thanks for watching, guys.